Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Drop. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the best tractions of this year or the past year so far. So I guess the beginning of 2024 and also all of last year. And uh, there's been a lot of shoes that I've been playing in for the past month or two where the traction is really, really good. So I had to, I feel like I had to update the list a little bit. So if you guys do wanna cop any of these shoes, I try to leave them a free link in the description box. There are a good amount of shoes on this list. So I'm gonna try to uh, hustle my way through this list. Uh, and this, of course, it's a good thing because traction is really, really important for basketball, right? So for most people, I feel like if you're just backing someone down, like posting someone up, your traction isn't as important in my personal opinion. But uh, I feel like most people want good traction, especially since, you know, there are a lot of guard type players, I feel like nowadays, <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone, everyone wants to play the guard. So uh, yeah, uh, traction, of course, if you're sliding around all over the place, you can't really play basketball, you know, you can't really do moves, you know, you can't do step backs, crossovers, cuts uh, as well, and also as responsive, right? Because you're gonna be sliding around. So, uh, traction is one of my most important factors in a hoop shoe uh, for me. So, anyways, uh, I do have two tiers. I guess I shouldn't add these shoes on this list because there are a lot of top tier performers, but I feel like, you know, the second tier. These shoes have amazing bite on clean court, but they do pick up a little bit of dust. So that's why I put it in second tier. Uh, so anyways, let's get it started right off with the LeBron Next Gen Amped, right? So of course, it's the same exact outsole as the, you know, Next Gen. So uh, it's a map of Akron and you do have to break it in. I had to break in my solid white rubber outsole a little bit, but once I did, the traction on a clean court is really, really good. You know, almost top tier traction, right? Really, really nice stop but it does pick up a little bit of dust, right? And I felt like it was picking up a little bit more dust than all the other shoes on the first tier. So that's why I put it in the second tier, but it still has very nice solid traction performance on a clean court, on a dusty setting. And also durability, I feel like you should be fine. You know, there is a lot of surface area. There's a lot of grooves, so you should be fine on outdoor court. And also the rubber is pretty dang hard. Uh, next, we got the Fission 9. So same thing, the Fission 9, oh my gosh, guys. So when it was raining about back uh, like a week or two ago, it was super humid on the court and it was just first of all the fission 9 has a really really loud squeak right super duper loud very very high pitch uh but when i was playing on a clean court right that very very nice humid wet court it was biting really really well i had a freaking really hard stop so yeah fission 9 very very nice but now that it's been a little bit dry you know it, it's been picking up a little bit more dust so same thing that's why it's on the second tier uh not so good dust performance comparing to the first tier uh on this list but it's still not bad you know it's a very very easy wipe and uh just be careful a little bit you know because if you do let a little bit too much dust pick up this slide out a little bit dangerously right uh and it is a little bit inconsistent so that's why i put in the second tier for the vision 9 and same thing with the next shoe which is lebron 21 right so the traction uh for that colorway is really really good it's kind of like semi-translucent with that purple uh but yeah on a clean court amazing amazing but just like the vision 9 but uh when it was dusty and i didn't you know have time to wipe off the dust it would slide out a little bit it would be a little bit more dangerous and also a little bit inconsistent on dust and it wasn't terrible and it wasn't something that was like it happened to me a lot it was just a couple of times that happened to me so uh, that's why i'm putting it in second tier uh, but also lebron 21 i feel like it'll be pretty good on the outdoor court not the best but also not terrible you do have a good amount of grooves the rubber is on the harder side of things uh, so it should be fine but i guess it is a pretty expensive shoe as well so anyways there's that next we got the sabrina one so the sabrina one same thing amazing bite on the clean court not super amazing comparing to like i don't know the fission 9 and lebron 21 i feel like those shoes bite a little bit harder than sabrina's but sabrina one still has a very very solid bite on a clean court and i would say the sabrina one also is a little bit more consistent on dust uh comparing it to the fission 9 and the lebron 21 right it, it, it reminds me a little bit more of the uh next gen amped right so where it's not sliding out like dangerously that much but it just picks up a little bit more dust and slides around a little bit more so the sabrina one is still pretty dang nice and last but not least we have the lirin 4 the lirin 4 when i first got it i was like yo i thought I thought it was gonna be top, top tier, but no, uh, I think it's because the grooves are so close together with that herringbone, right? And because of that, I feel like it picks up a little bit more dust and traps dust a little bit more. And it doesn't have amazing performance on dust, right? 
So very similar to the next gen, right? But I would say the Lyran 4 has the best stop on a clean court uh, out of all of these shoes. I get the Fission 9 and the Lyran 4 have the best stops, right? Uh, on a clean court. But again, uh, it is affected by dust a little bit more than all the shoes in the first tier. So there's that. Th those are all the shoes in the second tier. Now let's move on to first tier. First tier means these shoes are really, really good on a clean court. Also have really good performance on dust, right? Starting this list off, we got the Series Player Only Player 1 Plus. So the Player 1 Plus is freaking out absolutely amazing and also another plus about that shoe is the outsole is really durable the rubber is very very hard you have a lot of grooves and the grooves are very thick and deep so outdoor use you should be fine and also on a clean court you have a, a really really nice bite you stop on a dime i'm gonna be saying that pretty much for all these other shoes as well right so you're gonna be stopping on a dime you're gonna be biting through that dust very well it doesn't pick up dust that much but if it does you just do a very easy and slight wipe and you're good to go again right so very very good dust performance as well and so uh, that's why I love playing the Player 1 Plus. And same thing with, you know, the Curry 11 and Curry 4 and all the shoes that have flow. But I want to put in like the, I don't know, the second tier, but also the first tier because it bites so hard on a clean court. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it bites on a clean court the best. Like you, I've never experienced a, a shoe that bites as hard as the flow outsoles. It's just crazy how good it is. You stop on a pin, not on a dime on a pin, right? But then it does pick up a little bit more dust. So uh, I want to put it in second tier, but like I said, it has such a good bite on on first tier. So I don't know, I'll maybe put in tier 1.5. I don't know. But anyways, a Curry 11, Curry 4 low flow tro, Curry 4 flow tro, Curry 2 low flow tro, uh, all the uh, flow future X's, you know, so yeah. You should be fine with any of those shoes. Next, of course, we got the AE1. The AE1 also top tier, top tier. Like you can't get any better than the AE1. I definitely feel like the AE1 and another shoe on this list is the best for performance on traction, right? So the AE1 on a clean court, it bites super hard, almost, almost as hard as the Curry's, you know what I mean? So that's how good the bite is. And then also on a dusty court, it doesn't pick up dust that much, right? It bites through dust really, really well, but also, again, if it does pick up a little bit of dust, you do a very easy slight wipe, you should be good to go. So it's not affected by dust that much either. I guess durability though, isn't the best because the rubber is kind of on the softer side of things. And there's not a whole lot of contact with the floor for the outsole, but uh, yeah, we're talking about indoor courts. So uh, yeah, AE1 is one of the best. Same thing with the jaw one. The jaw one is also extremely, extremely nice. You have a very, very nice bite on a clean court. You stop on a dime. It also bites your dust really well. You know, it doesn't pick up dust that much. And again, it's a very easy wipe uh, on that outsole as well. Uh, and also, it should be good for outdoor use. It's a very hard rubber. You have a lot of grooves, a lot of surface area. So uh, outdoor use, you should be fine. And uh, I want to add the Harden Volume 7 on this list, but uh, there's not a whole lot of Harden Volume 7s left, especially on the Adidas site. So I don't know, but you guys are no, hard volume sound very very nice but does pick up a little bit of dust so again i'll put it in like tier 1.5 tier 2 you know uh next of course we got the gt cut 3 so the gt cut 3 also really really good on a clean court you have a really nice bite and also has a very loud high pitch squeak which i do like and also if you're playing on a dusty court it has very nice performance as well you know buys through dust extremely well and it's a very easy wipe if it does pick up a little bit of dust you know so i like that you know because the grooves are a little bit more space apart comparing it to its budget counterpart which is the gt cut academy and it's still amazing amazing bite and a really really good bite on a clean court you're gonna have an amazing time also also super loud high pitch squeak you know uh, but it does pick up a little bit more dust in the GT Cut 3 still not as bad as like the tier 2 right but it still does pick up a little bit more dust than the GT Cut 3 because uh, the grooves are a little bit more closer together but again you know it, it's a very easy wipe and also durability should be a little bit better in the academy because there are more grooves you know the GT Cut 3 it's a little bit more space apart not as much surface area so uh, there is that next of course we got the LeBron Witness 8 which is crazy. You know what I mean? The LeBron Witnesses never really had amazing traction for me personally, but the Witness 8, I was very, very surprised. Everything else about that shoe is all right. You know what I mean? It's just a budget shoe, you know, materials, it's all right. Uh, cushion kind of is not that nice, you know, but because the traction is so good, I actually enjoy playing that shoe, you know? Uh, on a clean court, you stop on a dime. It pretty much has a top tier bite. Really, really nice bite. Also through dust, it picks up dust not that much. Very good English. It doesn't pick up dust that much, you know what I mean? So it doesn't pick up dust that much and also if it does pick up a little bit of dust again very very easy wipe and you're good to go again 
Uh, so yeah, the Brown Witness 8, surprisingly very, very good. Durability, uh, it doesn't seem like it'll be the best because of that waffle pattern. The grooves are a little bit thinner. So it's just weird that they put like a thinner rubber on a cheaper shoe. But uh, if you're playing on a clean court, the Brown Witness 8, amazing, right? Next, we got the Zoom Freak 5 or the Freak 5, Nike Freak 5. Of course, that's Giannis's shoe. And traction also, if you're playing on a clean court, you have an amazing, amazing bite. Uh, also, it bites through dust really well. It's not really affected by dust that much. If you let a little too much dust pick up, it does slide around a little bit, you know, uh, but definitely not as bad as like the LeBron 21 or anything like that. So uh, yeah, just remember, do it easy wipe and you should be good to go on a dusty setting and also durability should be fine there are a lot of grooves there's a lot of surface area the rubber is on the harder side of things as well so you should be fine on out there court next of course we got any 808 3 Right, the 808 3, the 808 3 Ultra, the 808 3 Ultra V2, uh, they're all amazing tractions. Uh, if you're playing on a clean court, you have top tier bites. You know, stop pretty much on a dime. Also, picks up pretty minimal dust. Uh, I would say it picks up a little bit more dust, you know, than the AE1 uh, and like the, the Jaw one. Uh, but still, that doesn't pick up dust that much. And also, it's a very, very easy wipe, right? So you should be fine. And also on outdoor court, you should be fine as well. You know, durable outsoles. The 808 3 Ultra seems a little bit softer for the rubber comparing to the regular 8083 but still both of them should be fine on out their court and next of course we have the AR1 the AR1 and the AE1 in my personal opinion are the best tractions on this list right so the AR1 I do have multiple colorways of that shoe as well and every single colorway that I've played in has amazing traction besides the translucent outsole so if you can stay away from the translucent outsole uh, and try to get a solid rubber outsole but then yeah the AR1 has an amazing bite, really, really good bite, no top tier bite. Uh, it stops on a dime, all the good stuff, but also it doesn't pick up that much dust. It has really good performance on a dusty setting, bites through dust really well, and also uh, it doesn't really pick up dust that quickly. And if it does pick up dust, it's a very, very easy wipe as well. So uh, AR1 dust performance is really, really good. And next, of course, we have the AG4, which is one of my favorite hoop shoes of last year as well, because also the traction is really good, right? A really nice, solid bite on a clean court. It does pick up a little bit more dust than the AE1 and the AR1, but still really, really good dust performance. And it's a very, very easy wipe as well. So uh, still really good performance on dust. And also durability should be fine. The AG4 has you know pretty hard rubber, a lot of surface area, so you should be fine. And last but not least, we have the Li Ming Speed 10. So the Speed 10, uh, also pretty dang cheap. It's 135 bucks, I believe, but also you get full length boom in that shoe, which is really, really nice. But anyways, the traction also, really really nice uh, on a clean court you have top tier bites it does pick up a little bit more dust than most of the other shoes in the first tier but it's still really really nice it bites through dust still extremely well it also doesn't really pick up dust that quickly but like i said it does pick it up a little bit faster than all the other shoes on the first tier but still not that bad and uh, a durability probably not the best though you know uh, the rubber it seems a little bit softer even though it says it's like durable rubber or whatever it doesn't seem like it'll be very nice for outdoor use because it is softer so anyways any of these shoes, if you want really, really good traction, you should be good to go. Uh, but again, top, top tier for me would be uh, the AR1 and also the AE1. But anyways, that about concludes this video. Again, if you guys want to cop any of these shoes, I try to leave an affiliate link in the description box, but that's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.